Glenelg was a very strong club back in those days. Um, it was fantastic. The Crows was a, a brilliant experience and something that uh, I feel very fortunate and privileged that I had the chance to be a part of. And you did win a club champion, which is a tremendous effort. It's, oh, you, it's difficult to win a, a club championship, but did you foresee the time when you could do that? Um, I felt that uh, given a chance and uh, all things going right, that uh, I could break into perhaps the top five if I was everything was going well and had a great season. To win the club, club championship, and I've seen some of the guys have won it and some of the guys have missed out. And uh, Yeah, I, I look back on it with uh, really fond memories now. Um, and at the time, it was, uh, you know, I must admit it was a... Uh, a bit of a blur, but right now, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of that achievement. And you weren't always the most skilled player. I mean, you had your critics, didn't you? Tell Unfairly. Us, tell us how you dealt with that. Uh, it's interesting. Um, you know, the critics are always there, and uh, I guess it's the support around you, but it, uh, it gets down to self-belief, and I always believe that, uh, you know, I had, like everyone, had a few deficiencies, but um, I felt that my uh, my skills in the particular areas I was being chosen for far outweighed those and I, I hope that uh, my record stands that uh, you know people look back and say hey he wasn't a bad bad player after all I can't believe one of your coaches would publicly humiliate you at a Glenelg best and fairest presentation when you were a kid yeah neither can I it was quite incredible it was actually a couple of times and, uh, was it you calling <laughs> like, like Matthew told me how the story you, how did you feel well, that a guy well, like Matthew honestly Jack? Matthew told me this story and I thought I could not have done that no, no person could have done that to a young player but it, well, it wasn't at the best of Ferris. It was actually the uh, the post-87 premiership uh, uh, drink where Glenelg actually didn't uh, make it through. And, uh, well, they lost the grand final. And uh, we, there were great celebrations on Glenelg Oval. And I had a good season in the under-17s. And Graham was the tall poppy walking off the field. And, and uh, I sort of saw him walk by and said, OK, Graham, here you going? And, uh, yeah, and I sort of got the cold shoulder and then uh, I sort of broached him at the best and fairest lady. He said, uh, yeah, listen, uh, about next year, I reckon you're too small, fella. You're not going to make it. So, oh, um, <laughs> how cruel is that? I, I, I don't believe that. Oh, well, if you, how can you just disbelieve <laughs> Matthew Lipkatz? I can't. You can't disbelieve I yes. cannot believe that I would have said it in that context. How cruel is that, Matthew? How did you feel? Uh, listen, I, I must admit, I was a, uh, wasn't the overly... Uh, most tallest bloke at that stage, but uh, <laughs> once again it was self belief, and uh, I knew Graham was wrong. But uh, uh, I, had to, I, had to, I had to push my barrow a few times out of it, let me tell you. Uh, you did, and um, but now it, you, your medical journey's been interesting because yeah. uh, we're going to run out of time here. Um, you are now highly qualified, so tell us what you've been doing and how you've uh, arrived at where you are today. Yeah, well, I qualified as a doctor near on 12 years ago, um, and the uh, time throughout that I've uh, I've worked in a number of departments, but now I'm qualified. I'm a qualified orthopedic surgeon, and um, really looking forward to getting my career up and blossoming. And uh, you know, so I've been studying for a number of years. Once again, after after footy finished, and I've just uh, come back from ten months or so visiting the world, really, and, uh, and seeing some of the world leaders in the field that uh, in orthopedic surgery that uh, I'm uh, heading into. And have you learned much? I mean, oh, it's oh, it's a been silly, amazing. silly question. No. no, it has been amazing. It's been, um, I've been with the world leaders in the, uh, particularly in the knee uh, surgical area, um, in both America and, and Europe and also in Australia. So I feel that uh, I've seen uh, some of the best guys in the world and, uh, in fact, form friendships and networks with those guys that uh, will be lifelong. And uh, Matthew, we haven't much time, but. Uh, uh, why do they do their knees again? That may that may that may be a dumb question, but but, but take Rick Bigland. Why why or how could that happen? Oh, it's a, it's um, twisting, landing, contact, all those sorts of things added to a highly physical game. Mm. Um, it is just, I think uh, one of my anatomy uh, professors once said to me, "We weren't met, meant to run." let alone do the things that we do in playing sports. So obviously, uh, you know, a mechanical uh, 
uh, mechanical faults do occur and, and mechanical trauma does occur. So, you know, like people do their primary or they do their first injury, it is highly likely that uh, a second injury will occur and does occur in a certain percentage of cases. Oh, gosh. Uh, now, and again, before you go, you, you, your lovely wife Jo has, has raised the three children and again you're expecting another one. Uh, yes, we've got lucky again. Have <laughs> <laughs> you got three girls, Matty? Is that right? I've got three girls, that's right, yeah. Are you full hoping for a little boy? Listen, the guy, uh, Ken, I'm, uh, I'm just really happy that uh, we're going to have another child and do any tick of the clock. Oh, um, good on you. If, if it's a, a girl, I will be so happy if another one of those uh, female race jumps on top of me and is smiling and saying, G'day, Dad, and if it's a boy, then I'll be just as happy. Uh, good yeah, on you. Well, the more, more kids you have, the more you want. Have you worked that out? Uh, I agree, I agree. However, both Joe and I agree that uh, four certainly will be enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, it's great to talk to you. Congratulations on a wonderful career, both on the footy field and, and, and in your profession. And, uh, and we wish you and Joe all the very best, Matthew. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Robert. Lovely to talk to you. Cheers, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, there you go. You want role models? He, he, there, there, role there, model. John, the call before news. Hey, he played for the Crows, and you know he didn't. Uh, you know he wasn't a. He wasn't. I don't know, he used the word nerd. I mean, he, was, he had a good social life. He good was sense of humour. Really popular with the yeah, exactly teammates and. and there's there's an example of what I'm saying here. Matthew Lutek, our guest on Where Are They Now? Brought to us by IDS.